The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. The Pharisees knew the Old Testament. And then one young boy is just there educating them. His name is Jesus Joseph. He's busy teaching them things. John chapter 4 verse 19. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I perceive that thou art a prophet. That means they didn't even know him. All right. So there was a discussion between Jesus and the woman. There was a discussion between Jesus and the woman on where to worship. The woman said the mountain is a place to worship. Jerusalem is a place to worship. That was the subject of discourse. Because she was talking about a place. But Jesus was dealing with a New Testament reality. She had no access to understanding in John chapter 4. So she's fetching her water and Jesus came to her and asked her water to drink. Look at verse 10 of that John chapter 4. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he will have given thee living water. He will have asked him, and he will have given thee living water. If you knew the gift of God. So Jesus was not talking about what was temporary. Jesus was talking about what was permanent. She was dealing with temporal situations. Then Jesus added in verse 14 of John chapter 4, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. The water that I shall give him, he shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life the water that jesus gives is permanent when you drink it you are satisfied forever permanent whatever he does is permanent and jesus was dealing with salvation here john chapter 4 verse 21 jesus said unto a woman believe me the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at jerusalem worship the father so jesus is bringing in the character now look at verse 22 you worship you know not what we know what we worship for salvation is from the jews when he says salvation is of the jews what he actually means is that salvation is from the jews 23 i love this one but the hour comet and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh the father seeketh such to worship him the father is not seeking worship he's seeking such to worship him so true worshipers here does not imply that there are fake worshipers the use of the word true through worshipers the use of that word is the greek word aletia in the greek a l e t i a aletia has to do with permanent true worshipers is a status permanent worshipers true worshipers is a status it means permanent worshipers john will say this is the true light it doesn't mean that there is fake light this is the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world meaning he is pointing to the permanent light it's like jesus talked about true riches true riches means permanent riches you know if you are not faithful with the unrighteous mammon who shall commit to your trust the true riches the permanent riches so it is always in comparison to what is temporal they are talking about jerusalem a place temporal and jesus is talking about worship in a permanent state that is not temporal true worshipers true worshipers so jesus now is saying to this woman you will not need earthly places to worship 
true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth so true worship is not a location true worship is a person that person is a believer that has a revelation of god that is true worship a revelation an accurate revelation of god in spirit and in truth means in spirit which is the reality in spirit which is the reality so they used to go to jerusalem to the temple to bring offering and jesus was saying you don't have to do that anymore now it will be in spirit the word in spirit means in the unseen reality a reality that is not tangible or physical to the eyes unseen spiritual or immaterial in spirit and in reality not sincerity reality so jesus is talking about the reality of worship he says he seeketh for the reality of worship he seeketh such to worship god the father never sought anyone to worship him in any place god the father never sought anyone to worship him in any place never and jesus was saying this in front of solomon's temple what was the temple for huh it was for worship who asked him to build it god never entered that temple for once god never showed up in that temple even one time so it was an economic waste god never showed up in their forms even the temple of moses god was never there even the temple of zerubbabel god was never there god even told zerubbabel don't waste your money and time the kind of arms going to, the kind of temple i'm looking for is not by might he told him emphatically but these guys were dull of hearing it's not by might it's not by power it's going to be built by my spirit it's going to be built by my spirit i don't need a physical place no location in the physical can contain me no location is good enough but the temple i'm going to live in is going to be built by my spirit we're dealing with the father and his family glory to god somebody shout hallelujah that's better that's more like home now all right so jesus said the time cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship in spirit and in truth in reality spiritual realities they will worship in spiritual realities they will worship in unseen realities so the true worship of god is in the unseen realities the true worship of god takes place in the unseen realities it does not take place in any physical structure hebrews chapter 8 verse number 5 who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things example and shadow so they were serving unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as moses was admonished of god when he was about to make the tabernacle for see saith he that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount please take note of the word heavenly things now if you read that you will think it was god that asked moses to build a temple but they were a shadow the word shadow is the word skia it means darkness or something obscure that means truth in a skia you will not see the truth in something that is obscure now look at colossians chapter 2 verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ verse 16 of the same colossians chapter 2 let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink why didn't you eat the communion let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday christmas service easter service or of the new moon first of december morning dew the dew of hamon which are a shadow of things to come but the reality is of christ 
all those practices were pointers to the real deal so that temple was a shadow a scare shadow means darkened darkened that means information of things to come but the body the soma in the greek used for actual things reality the body the real thing the same word is used in first peter 2 24 who his own self bore our sins in his own body the body there is the word soma which is reality the reality is a person so don't let anybody judge you in meat or drink because the reality of all those practices is a person meaning you can never handle symbols and be seeing reality if you're handling symbols you can't see reality but if you let the symbols point you to the reality and you abandon the symbols then you can embrace the reality you can't handle the symbols and the real at the same time that's why until this day when moses is read there is a veil because moses is shadows but the reality is christ himself we are so grateful for having you here on our platform kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here and also like this message for us do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from thank you message community